going back to Mike Dunleavy and what the first move is going to be, Bonte. If he gets one, right? If he gets one, nobody cares about his playing career anymore. If he gets a championship, wow, nobody plays, nobody cares about his playing career anymore. But that's gonna be, it's gonna be one of the hardest ones to get because now, yep. look, I was, t- I wanted the Nuggets to smack the Lakers. Of course, right. I did. Sorry, Joe Spadoni, but that's what I wanted. But then when they kept rolling the way they're rolling, okay, I really wanted the Heat to win the whole thing because I didn't want another Western Conference right. team with championship DNA. Mm-hmm. So now you have the Nuggets who. People call them boring, but I call them steady Eddie, right? Mm-hmm. And, and the and that's been the issue with the Grizzlies. They're hot, they're cold, they're front runners. The Nuggets, they're the scariest ones because they just kind of stay level. Right. So you have the Nuggets, you know the Lakers are going to make a move. Mm-hmm. So these teams are not going to stand pat. They're going to continue to get better. So what is Mike Dunleavy Jr. going to be able to do to to keep the Warriors in the fold? Some of that is out of his control. Guys just got to yeah. play better and be available. But if he gets you one, if he gets, and I would say more specifically with this core, nobody cares about his playing career. Right. You get step number five, one more than LeBron, you're celebrated forever. And then, you know, the question will be, and it'll be an unfair question, very unfair question, but boy, what did Bob really do if Dunleavy wins one? I I put something out there, but all I had said was, it's crazy that Bob is so beloved mm-hmm. that I didn't see when he stepped down. I didn't see not one. I didn't see, I had to be the one to tweet it. And after okay. that, everybody was, some people agreed. Some people didn't. I didn't see one thing say, well, I mean, Bob had Steph Curry mm-hmm. who he did not draft. Mm-hmm. Right. And Clay Thompson, who he also did not draft. Mm-hmm. Right. And you, he did, he did draft Draymond green and you get those championships and not, I would never call it luck, but you did have the best shooting right. backcourt arguably of all time. Right. And nobody talked about that. And then because of that, you got Kevin Durant, right? Or that was a big part of that. Nobody talked about that. It was all, what are we going to do without Bob? I'm looking around. Don't, don't we still have Steph Curry? Yes, that's still there. Don't we still have Clay Thompson? Well, well, some people don't want Clay Thompson. Some people, some some people, people are out on Clay Thompson. Have you heard this show? And, and I'm not have taking anything away of course. I, and I'm not taking anything away from Bob Myers. I'm just saying it was wild to me that not one out of all the couch coaches we have, guys like, you know, right. my dad and my uncle. Right. Well, if I had Steph Clay and KD and Draymond, I could have won it. The mm-hmm. way people treat Steve Kerr, it's crazy to me that Bob Myers didn't get any of that. Right. So now moving forward, if Mike Dunleavy does win one, then you start thinking, I mean, well, I guess maybe I could be a GM. You know, that's how people will think. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMG, FM, and AC1, San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app. That's Alan Styles filling in for Joe Shaska, the Butcher. I am Bonte Hill. We got Spadoni. We got Lubbin. And I got, so got a couple questions here. This is the start of a new dynamic era in management. A new dynamic and era in management, I should say. How do you feel about him being that guy, Mike Dunleavy Jr., leading this new era of Warriors basketball? It's going to be the face. It's going to be out front. And any lingering thoughts about him, about how he was perceived as a player? Because a lot of thoughts come into play about his playing days when you think about his name being floated as the GM of the Golden State Warriors. A lot of people, oh, my God, oh, my God. I see. I've been on this. I think he's going to be a good GM. I really do. I think he has a gravitas. I think he has a wherewithal. The scouting is big. But also player relationships. He played in this game. He struggled. But he could relate to a lot of these guys. Mm -hmm. Being highly rated. Going to Duke, winning the national championship, playing in big games. Dudley V. Jr. can relate to that. Right. He can. Yeah. So I, I, I like the move. Anybody else feel different about that? By the way, the, there's a rumor that the Pelicans are considering dealing Zion Williamson to the Hornets for the number two overall pick. Mm. They want Scoot. They want Scoot. Zion Williamson going back to the Carolinas. He's from South Carolina, so not too far from his home. But – you know, what? what is Mike Dunleavy Jr.'s first order of business? Does that perception of what you had as a player kind of cloud how you feel about him being the GM? Or is everybody happy? Like, I'm looking here, Comcast Business Text Line, 408. Great move. You had to hire someone internal and familiar with their organization and players. No way somebody from the outside was going to be able to come in and drastically change things. I agree with that. I agree. 405, Mike Dunleavy Jr. has already been a part of 
over the past few years of building the team when they won the championship. He's now just a face. Not shocked. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see here. You two, what are they saying? Well, they're talking about fake trades and everything like that, so I'm not going to get into that. I feel good about Trade the generator. Move. I feel good. Love it. How you feeling about Mike Dunleavy Jr.? I want to get your thoughts. Uh, I mean, guy's been around long enough to where he should know how the nuts and bolts of this organization work as far as, like, I feel like the Warriors got the best candidate in-house that they could have gotten for the job. He's going to be around. He knows his team, and I think his, his – First order of business is keep this ship afloat for the next couple years and get Steph as close to a title or win him a title as you can before he calls it a career. A lot of people, I'm seeing some tweets, man. Disgusting. Terrible. Yuck. For Mike Dunleavy? Yeah. I does anybody even Is that is that because he's just Mike Dunleavy Jr.? He's got to get that. That film off him. Like, I'd, I'd be curious to see like, these people like, oh, disgusting, Mike Dunleavy Jr., gross. Like, like, who would you rather see? Like, right. Say if they hired Daryl Morey, I would be irate this morning. Mm-hmm. I, that's one that would make me angry. Get ready for James Harden. Come on. <laughs> you know? I think this move just signals that they're just going to ride this current core out, and a lot of fans had their hopes up. Maybe if they brought in someone else that they would make a big trade or a big splash. You think fans are starved for that right now? Hmm. I think that's a great po- point, Spadoni. But also, fans can't be mad at anybody but Steph, right? And, and nobody's going to be mad at Steph. Steph is the one who said, you're not breaking up this core. Now, th- that doesn't have anything to do with maybe moving off of Kaminga or Jordan Poole. But the price got to be right, you know? Shout out my wife. She loves the price is right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Drew Carey. The, the yeah. price has got to be no right. no Bob Barker. No, no. He ain't no Bob Barker. I tell you that one. That show has lost some luster. I there still go. go on though. I still go on the prices right, but it's just not the same. No, but but Drew does a good job. He does a good job. But you know, we can fire up these trade generators, and none of them are ever going to come to fruition right. anyway. If the price isn't right for for Kaminga, I'm sure you wouldn't want it to move. And look for Jordan Poole. The problem with Jordan Poole is we don't know where these guys the stocks are right now. If right. they're low, if they're high, I I can't imagine Jordan Poole's stock being incredibly high, right. not as high as it was last year. And Kam- I would say Kaminga's might be higher right. than Jordan Poole because well, you haven't seen him mess up as much. Well, that's the thing when it comes to these fake trades, right? When it comes to these fake trades, Jordan Poole, oh, man, he stinks. Get him off my team, trade him. But we want this player. Right. Well, if his value's low, what type of player do you think you're going to get? Exactly. Like, let's be realistic here. Exactly. Same thing with Trey Lance. Oh, or with Jimmy Garoppolo. Everybody's, Jimmy stinks, blah, blah, blah. To go get two second round picks for him. Wait a minute, I thought he stunk. Right. So you know only only you know that they stink. Right. It's, the other team has no. The other team thinks they're booing the fool. Right, yeah, they don't right. watch film. They don't watch tape. There are some teams yeah. out there though <laughs> that will. You can sucker. You you, can, there's you, always a sucker in these leagues. There's you know, no doubt. shout out Carl Anthony Towns and the Timberwolves. Yeah, there's always know? a sucker. No doubt. Tyler Miller thinks this, and I wonder if a lot of fans think this. Joey Lightyears is the real GM now. Joe Lacob's running the show now. Dunleavy Jr. sits a GM in terms of title. There's no way for us to know that yet. If that is the case, does that concern you that Joe Lacob would have a lot more power when it comes to decision-making, yes. draft picks, signings? Is that a scary thought? I think so because he gives me, he gives me Jerry Jones vibes. In terms of running the team, I want to yeah. I, I want to be a part of this W, <laughs> right? I want to be a part of this championship. So it would worry me because you know you're a great businessman, but that's not necessarily your bag. Mm. So we'll see. Mm. We-